I don't know how much I can say about the Drexler Sibbett team performance model. It's a good model, but it's also a proprietary model. It belongs to Grove Tools Incorporated, and so I'm only going to describe it to the extent that I need to, to give you an idea about how it works so that you can explore it in greater detail if you choose. It's my belief that I'm going to tell you no more than can reasonably be interpreted as fair use for an educational purpose. So forgive me if I take a light touch on this one, but my intention is just to demonstrate that there are a number of good tools and some of them are proprietary, but that you may want to investigate them further for your own learning. The Drexler Sibbett team performance model was developed by Alan Drexler and David Sibbett. It illustrates team development in seven stages. The first four are about the creation of the team, and the last three are about driving ever greater levels of performance and sustaining those performance levels. The model has a clear relationship to the Tuckman model, to John Whitmore's model, and to Cog's ladder, but in seven stages, it gives us a new way of thinking about the development of a team. The first stage is orientation. This is where we ask questions about why we are here and together. This is fundamentally about the team figuring out what its purpose is. The second stage is trust building. This is where team members ask, who are you? to one another. They find out about each other's capabilities, they start to build relationships, and they start to build trust. The third stage is goal clarification. Team members inquire more deeply about what we are here to do. This involves further understanding the team's goal and its objectives, and the background and context within which they find themselves. The fourth stage is called commitment. And it's about the team trying to figure out how it's going to do what it's going to do. It has become committed to the task, and now it's looking at the resources it has available and the constraints it's under and the time that it has to do its task. I think of this as a high-level planning stage. It's thinking about budgets and timelines and roles and resources. The implementation stage is where the team gets into the detailed planning stage. Now it's trying to find real solutions to the real problems, asking questions like who, where, when, and what are we going to do? As a project manager, I recognize this as being very much akin to the planning stage of a project. The high performing stage comes next. This is where the team is starting to work well together. It's a fantastic feeling. They are working the plan. They are delivering whatever it is they've been charged to create. You can think of this stage as harvesting the investment of all of the other stages. You now have your high performing team. The seventh and last stage in the Drexler Sibbett model is renewal. This is the stage where the team reasserts the question why? What have we done? And what is our purpose going forward? Is there a continuing role for us? If so, what's next? And what do we need to do to adapt ourselves to it? The Drexler Sibbett team performance model is a simple seven step model. I've made it sound a lot simpler than it is in reality because I don't want to say too much about it because I want to stick well within any fair use guidance because this is a proprietary model. However, if you like the sound of the model, then please do look up the Drexler Sibbett team performance model on the Grove website. And please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video, because there'll be loads more great management courses content to come. So please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, Keep learning.